Hello everyone. In this episode, I wanted to cover data binding for Blazor. So for any software that that has a UI, the software needs to do two things. The first thing is to display information. Display information. The second thing is to manipulate the information. And we look at the data flow okay, for the first one, for display, display information. We have a UI and we have data. I'm just using a database a symbol to represent data. So it flows from the database to the uh, UI. Okay, so this is UI, this is data. This is UI and this is data. And the second one is data manipulation, right? So we have UI and we have data. And data flows into the UI. When you do your data manipulation on the UI, you always want to save the data back to the data source. So from this, we know that there are two kinds of ways for data flow. One is this one-way data flow. One way. And this is second is the two-way. So for data binding, this are the, these are the two ways of data binding. This, we have one-way data binding and two-way data binding. But why do we even need data binding? Why can't we just uh, program without it? Yes, we can. Uh, we always need a UI. We always have a UI, regardless whether we have data binding or not. We always have a UI, and we also have a, a variable that represents the data, right? We have a variable, and we need a variable to be displayed on the UI, right? So we load the data from the data source to the variable, and we need to, need to display the variable on the UI, right? Without data binding, we can manually uh, find the element on the UI and set the variable value of the variable into the element. So we can manually uh, populate the data onto the element. And once we modify, we manipulate the data within the element on the screen, we can save the data uh, directly back to the data source without even going through the variable. Right? And if we want to load the data, we can load the data to the, um, to the variable. And then, again, display directly onto the element. So this is one way we can do it. But that, um, you know, this is a process we wanted to, to avoid. So that's why we have this thing that is called data binding, right? Where we actually bind, uh, we actually bind the the UI element or element to the data. So variable, actually, the variables. As if they are one, right? And there's two, two kind of, uh, two type of data binding. One is one-way data binding, where we only bind the data to the UI element. The other is two-way data binding. Obviously, we not only bind the, the variable to the element, but we also bind the UI elements to the variables. So that way, whenever we look at the variables, it always represents the UI elements on the screen. All right, so having said all of that, let's jump into the computer and look at the, uh, the codes. So I created a server-side Blazor project, and uh, 
uh, this is the index page. I, in this region, under this region, I have a view model that is uh, for a salesperson. This is the amount, um, well, maybe it's target amount or something like that, and then whether the salesperson is active and under which locations the salesperson is, uh, is active. And first of all, let's uh, uh, initialize the data. First of all, let's initialize the data. We need to override the, uh, the uninitialized uninitialized method. And in here, we are going to create a, a new person, new, um, well, let's, yeah, yeah, that's right. Indexed view model. And then, and then I will have the salesperson give it a name and amount All right well On locations let's give it some default locations all right so I have the data initialized and uh, for uh, for one-way data binding, we can do very simple thing to display the the salesperson's name, right? So it's as simple as you know doing this. It's a at sign, and then you just put the variable here. So that's one-way data binding, right? And let's display a few things. Um, name and amount, maybe. And you can uh, format the data like this. <clears throat> so this is one way data binding. And if you run this code, if you run this code, we can see the name Alex Let's have a line break here. And then we save it. So, um, so if we use Control F five you know, to run the project instead of just uh, just F five, then you will have uh, this page. Uh, once you make any changes, uh, it will, the page will detect the change from the signal uh, signal R channel. And then you just do a refresh, you will see your changes reflexed, uh, reflected. So I added a uh, a line break, which for whatever reason wasn't displayed. So I uh, I'm trying to add another one. Yeah, now we can see the line break here, and uh, we have this formatting here. These two are the one-way data binding, just to to bind the um, variable the variables to the front end. So to implement the two-way data binding, uh, we need to use the bind attribute. So for example, um, of course, if you want to manipulate data, right, we want to, let's say, we want to manipulate the, the amount, then we need to bind we need to bind not only from the variable to the to the element to the input element but also uh, we need to bind the element to the variable and for that we can use the bind command the ban the, the bind attribute so we have bind value and what do we want to bind which value do we want to bind we want to bind the amount right we want to do this and then, um, and then here, if we do this, and we save, come over here and refresh the page. Oh, see, 
the amount here, 15,000. Okay, so we have this 15,000 here, and if we make a change, okay, and we tab out from the text box, you notice this amount is also is also changed accordingly. So if we change this number to 100 and tab out from the text box, this number is also changed. This means what? This means that uh, when we're changing this and type out on change event, the uh, value is passed to the variable. And then the variable, because the variable is, is also bound to this, uh, this place, so this, this value is displayed here. So this is one way, one way data binding, this is two way. In the case that we want to, so in the case if when I want to uh, change the underlying variable while I'm typing directly in the uh, input box, uh, in that case, I need to add another, another uh, attribute, which is the bind value event. So that that's trying to tell the Blazor framework uh, at what event or what happens the value is uh, passed back to the variable. And here we want to say on input. So while we are inputting into the text box, the variables gets updated. That's what we're trying to say to the Blazor framework. So once we refresh, we can see while we're typing, the amount is passed to the underlying variables. So here I wanted to say a little bit more. So if you wanted to use bind, in this case you have to use bind event. All right, so if you wanted to use bind value, then in this case you have to use bind value. Otherwise there's gonna be exception. So um, the next I wanted to demonstrate checkbox. Checkbox is a type equals checkbox. And here we want to bind value. We don't have space. So here bind value to person dot is active. I also wanted to display the person active directly here, just so that we can see the changes. Okay, so we have this checkbox, but we don't know what it is. So we're gonna have a label. And, and here we say, is active. Give us space here. Refresh. All right. So we can see the is active is false. And but when I check it, you know, it's directly changed to true immediately. Uncheck, false. So you can see the two-way data binding for checkbox. Next one, uh, we wanna, I want to go to I want to go to uh, radio buttons. For for radio buttons, um, it will be a little bit different. There's no direct, um, there's no direct two-way binding for radio buttons. We have to kind of, you know, um, create our own. So the name variable is 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 the group. It indicates the group. So in here, um, we would have, you know, so we have read about a one and uh, read about a two. Okay, so we have this. I can see it works like uh, exclusive selection. It's within one group, but we need to add a binding to it. For that, I wanted to um, perhaps just add another variable here. Um, maybe I call it selected, uh, selected group. Right. And at the beginning, nothing is selected, so I changed to zero. So we put zero here. And uh, because we don't want to select any checkbox, 
uh, when the screen's loaded. So we need to bind that value to the redo buttons. And to do that, we need to use the check checked attribute. And here, um, we can use an expression here and say that uh, if the selected group equals one, then we check this. And here, if the selected group equals two, then we select this one. Right. So, so in this case, uh, we're not selecting anyone. So uh, if, after I refresh the screen, I expect to see that the radio buttons are not selected. Right. Not selected by default. But if I change this to number one and I save and refresh the screen, um, refresh the page, I see that I'm expecting number one to be selected, which is exactly what happened. So next, uh, we want to make changes to this radio buttons, uh, and we want this change to be uh, reflected in the variable selected group. Uh, how do we do that? So we can use the on click event. So in here, we can say on click, okay, and again with assign and parenthesis. Here we can add a arrow function. We can say that when this event happens, we call this uh, selected group function. Same thing here, uh, it goes to. When I click on number one, I want the selected group to change to number one. And when I click on number two, I want the selected group to change to number two. All right? And here, maybe here I'll display the selected group. Refresh the screen. At the beginning, I'm expecting number one being written there. Yeah, and change to number two immediately. We see the change. Perfect. So we cover checkbox, radio buttons, and what else do we need to cover? Perhaps a drop down list, right? So the drop down list is simpler. Uh, simpler than radio buttons. Radio buttons are probably the most difficult one. Um, here, let's point to a selected location, right? So which I don't have a, a variable here. So here we're going to create a selected location variable, and we can see that our location has an ID, and we're going to bind that to ID. So I'll create a selected location ID equals um, zero, um, indicating that we're not binding to anything at the beginning. So I have this here. And then um, that's the select. And for options, we want to have a for each loop um, where we, you know, location in person um, let's give it a better name. So I call it location and there are person locations variable. We have, uh, we want to create an option element. The value is lock.id, right? And the here we want to display, let's display the city. The thought is missing. So after that, we'll have a list of cities. But but the beginning, we want it to be um, no empty. Yeah, empty. After that, it's fine. So and we want it to show. I want it to show the selected location ID here. Okay. So let's refresh the screen. All right, so the beginning select location is zero, which is an empty item. And I have Toronto, Montreal. All right, so I'm going to select. You can see the ID changes, which is pretty cool. That's basically it for drop down list. We're binding to the selected location ID. And uh, the list of locations is kind of a one way binding to the uh, drop down list. And then 
Another way binding back is to a different variable, select a location ID. And next, perhaps we want to do a list, right? I want to show a list. So we would have an, an ordered list. And we're doing basically it's very similar to the drop down list. Uh, we want to display the location in persons, uh, locations. We want to have a list and we want to show the city. Right, and we want to see or show the province state, and we want to show the country. All right, so we have that. Now come over here and refresh. Yep, we have a list. So what about the table? Table will be pretty similar, um, but I'll demonstrate more than that. So I have a table, and we want to be using the uh, Bootstrap. And for here, we have a list of rows, and that we have for each. Again, we use this in persons dot locations a person dot locations and we have uh, we have as many rows as the locations and I want to show everything for the table and if I save it and refresh I have a, I have a list of, uh, of a table and that's a list of countries in the table but what if we wanted to create a table that um, it actually updates the underlying data? For that, what do we do? So, of course, we can change this to an input. Let's use this a city, for example. We change to input, and then the type is text, right? And um, if we do bind, to bind value, if we say bind to what? We bind to uh, location dot city. Let's see what happens if we do this. Refresh. As you can see. It's working, right? And if we want, we can change the bind event to oh, input. And yep, so we have it only in here as well. Pretty cool. Right, so if we change, copy all of this to actually, uh, let's give it uh, a class to be a uh, form control. That, that looks pretty good. And let's copy this to replace post this and the country and then we just need to change this to prof state change this to country and all right there we have it so we can change this to some other city right new york and new york USA so you can see that it's updated here also in the drop uh, drop down list so uh, if we have a submit button right then once we submit we can uh, handle the submit event and we can look at the locations and we have all of the changes 
in that variable. So this is the beauty of data binding, that we don't need to manually go into each one of them to grab the data. We have the data already when we are handling the click event of a submit button. Okay, so that's everything I want to cover today. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and please also subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching.